Hello and welcome to The Wine Down with Laithwaite's Wine uh, as part of the Henley Literary Festival. I'm joined today by a gentleman who needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. Uh, John Simpson, author of Our Friend in Beijing, uh, amongst other books, which is published by Hodder uh, and Stoughton. Hello, John. Very nice. To lovely see to meet you. Yeah, yeah, lovely to meet you. And we're going to enjoy a glass of wine together. Yes. And um, nice it's, colour. It's a lovely colour. I like the glasses too. It makes yeah. a lot of difference. Yes. Um, so this one we've picked. So so John gave us a, a steer on uh, a wine that he might enjoy, and he just said um, something unusual. Um, and then I was thinking, what was unusual for John? Uh, and yeah. then then my plan fell apart because he's probably reported from more countries than there are producing wines, certainly commercially. Um, so I went for a wine from the Becker Valley in the Lebanon, which um, has been uh, throughout the sort of 70s, 80s, and uh, the early 90s was basically a war zone. And it always fascinated me how they managed to produce wine. So this is from Domaine de Tourel, uh, and they were founded in 1868. And it's a blend of all French grape varieties, as you might expect, um, Cinso, uh, Carignan, Syrah, and Cabernet serving on. So cheers. Lovely. Here's to you, John. Cheers. Enjoy. Yes. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. And thank you for choosing such an interesting wine. I mean, it's so it's so lovely to have something from the Bekar yeah. Valley. I had the most <laughs> embarrassing experience once in 1982 in the, uh, the uh, in the when the Israelis invaded uh, Lebanon. Um, they flew their jets from Israel to uh, to Beirut and bombed Beirut uh, mm. on a daily, hourly basis uh, at times. And um, I uh, had to go from Damascus uh, by road to Beirut through the Bekar Valley. It was a most stunningly beautiful area, but... Um, dodgy very dodgy then and these Israeli planes were coming over at about I don't know about 120 150 feet I mean they were very very low unfortunately the night before in the intercontinental hotel in Damascus I'd been in the Chinese restaurant and something was very dodgy about whatever it was I'd had <laughs> And I'm, I'm sorry, vulgar, coarse, etc., etc. <laughs> My stomach was in a terrible state. And um, so I got in this car and we're driving, driving through the Bekar Valley. Plane came right overhead, shook everything in the car and probably shook my insides. <laughs> and I thought, oh, no, oh God, I need, I need to get out. I, and, and then another one came <laughs> like that. And I, I said to the driver, stop, I've, I've got... And he said, no, sir, don't worry, they're not hitting us, they're hitting me. <laughs> very, very, very humiliating. Your book, um, as you should say, your latest book, is it, has it been released yet? Or is it, mm. uh, it has just been released? Yes. Um, and I can think of nobody better to write a book, factual, fictional, uh, about a foreign, foreign correspondent, about a journalist in China and yourself. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, about your main character. Well, my main character is a kind of version of me, really, um, so that he's kind of, uh, you know, outlived his usefulness, <laughs> um, uh, dresses like an unmade bed, um, has got a series of, of collapsed uh, relationships stretching back for 50 years, um, and with, a, I hope, a certain sense of humour. He's not me entirely. And in fact, I mean, there are, there are some major differences. Um, but nevertheless, there's, there's quite a, a lot of me in there. And it just gives me the opportunity to, um, you know, settle some old scores, uh, to work out some of the bad things that have happened to me, including actually in Lebanon being tortured and subjected to a, a mock execution and so on. Um, and I, I find writing about all this is very therapeutic. Yeah. So a lot of characters, I dare say, have lent some inspiration uh, to, to your book. Um, I, I think, I don't think there's anyone in it that 
it isn't a, a real person that I know. Um, and of course, you know, I'm afraid to say I've settled some old scores. I mean, I've I had a really bad time under a, 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 a head of BBC head of news who came in from the outside from a, mm. another newspaper from a newspaper and uh, wanted to uh, get rid of me and loads of other people. And um, so he's come in for a bit of. Uh, bit of a, a wigging in the book I mean it's so easy you know you, yeah. you, you're you're the, the the god of your own creation if you, if you want to blast somebody you can you're gonna dangerous meet, you're going to meet these people again I hope so <laughs> and I hope they'll have bloody read the book <laughs> no good for you is, is the timing of your book is, is that significant at all because of the amount of sort of upheaval and change that's going on in the world so it seems quite topical yes well I, I mean of, of course as a, as a journalist I'm sort of kind of you know very sensitive to topicality but um, it, it I mean I, I feel I've written a lot about the the real China of 2021 uh, in this, how it actually is, what it feels like to live there, what it feels like to live under a government that wants to do the kind of things that the Chinese government uh, does at the moment. Yes. Um, again, a, a wonderful society, um, just not the kind of government you would want to live under. Yes. But uh, Chinese wines are, they tell me, Coming on, I you know, don't know. We, we've got a tasting of Chinese wines tomorrow at the head office, um, which I'm, I'm hoping I can get in for. So, yes, I mean, obviously, you know, growing middle class and there's a real thirst uh, for wine. Yes, uh, and a kind of nationalism that tells them not to yes. not to buy imported wine. Absolutely. But, but by yeah. their own. No, I mean, there's um, colleagues of mine over the years, you know, people from France, people from uh, the States, um, Australasia, wine people who have spent time working uh, in, in, in China basically helping them sort of get things up and started yes. so, uh, well they do, they do everything else don't they yeah. so I'm sure they can do I do remember sitting in a, a, a really expensive restaurant in, in Hong Kong uh, the guest of a, a, a top uh, um, businessman there a, a British guy and um, I got in slightly after he, he, he'd been there for five ten minutes and he he said to me I want to I want you to look over at the table over there and so I looked over and there were six quite kind of rough looking characters from from China from the sort of depths of China and they did they did look quite rough but they were wearing expensive suits right. and he said I want you to watch what they're drinking and uh, he, I suppose he, I don't know whether he'd heard the order or something. Anyway, the waiter brought in a, a bottle of Chateau Petrus, uh, which when I, I checked it out on the menu, I think it was 1976 or something, mm. or 77 was that? Mm. A bad, I think 76 was a bad year, bad year, wasn't it? But anyway, they had, uh, and and the price was astronomical, and so he said, "Watch, watch, watch." So the waiter poured out the the Chateau Petrus. And uh, then one of them whispered to the waiter, and the waiter came back with a tray full of Diet uh, Seven Up, and they poured it into the chateau Petrus and drank it down with great classic. Sense. You know, yeah. it meant nothing to them. It was just that it was a five thousand yes. quid bottle of wine, yeah, and they wanted yeah. to show they could do anything with it. Can I tell you a country that used to be a great wine producer? Um, and hasn't now since 1979, I suppose, or 78, is Iran. Iran, yes. Okay. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, it was oh. one of the basic uh, uh, grapes, uh, of course, comes from, from, from Iran. Um, I've never, I've heard stories. I've, I used to spend a lot of time in Iran. I barred, uh, yes. alas, from there <laughs> as from so many other... Well, what did you do to upset them, John? Uh, uh, well, I think I worked for the BBC, <laughs> which uh, they, they're they very deeply against. Um, but uh, uh, there used to be stories that people, you know, were still producing tiny mm -hmm. secret quantities. I have no idea whether that's true. And I don't think there can be many bottles 
of the sort of pre nineteen seventy eight nine sure. vintages left. Yeah. I um, doubt it. But one day, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Well, John, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, to meet you um, and to share a glass of wine yeah. with you. Uh, and what a lovely one. choice! Just perfect. Um, thank you. Yeah, so, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my thanks and, to you. And um, all the very best to you. Cheers. 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 Cheers.